The human race wa- is, was, and probably always will be deeply unwilling to accept the human Messiah. We don't want to be saved in our humanity. We want to be fished out of it. We crucified Jesus, not because he was God, but because he blasphemed. He claimed to be God and then failed to come up to our standards for assessing the claim. It's not that we weren't looking for the Messiah. It's just that he wasn't what we're looking for. Our kind of Messiah would come down from the cross. He would carry a folding phone booth in his back pocket. He wouldn't do a stupid thing like rising from the dead. He would do a smart thing like never dying. It's from Robert Capon from the book Hunting the Divine Fox. It's not that we weren't looking for the Messiah. It's just that Jesus didn't measure up to what we're looking for. Right? Isn't that what John asked this morning? Are you the one who is to come or are we to look for another? John the Baptist. The man who came and heralded the way. The man who was out in the desert baptizing people, telling them to repent and confess their sins, to follow after the one who was going to come after him, the one who would come and baptize us with fire and with spirit. And this same one who he questions then turns around not two seconds later and says, no one born is greater than John the Baptist. Did you catch that when Jesus said that? He said that at the very end there, right? Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has risen greater than John the Baptist. And yet he has the audacity to question whether or not Jesus is actually the Messiah. But let's be honest for a moment. Haven't you ever questioned whether Jesus actually is the Savior of the world? I'll be honest. Yes, yes, I have. I've doubted it. I've questioned it. And here's John getting ready to, because he's sitting in prison and what's going to happen to him? He's going to lose his head, literally, right? He's, he's waiting in prison to be, basically be killed because Herod has placed him in prison because he, John the Baptist told him that he wasn't allowed to marry his brother's wife. So he puts him in prison and John in prison sends his disciples to ask Jesus because he's wondering, are you really the one that we're supposed to wait for or is somebody else coming? And what does Jesus say? He doesn't send his disciples back and say, go back and tell John, yes, I'm the one. Right? Wouldn't it be great if Jesus was just straightforward with us whenever we ask him a question, but he's usually not. He sends back, go and tell John what you hear and you see. The blind have received their sight. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The, the dead are raised. The poor have good news brought to them. It's exactly what it said in Isaiah, isn't it? First lesson that Sarah Beth read for us. He will come and have you. And then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped, the lame shall leap like a deer, the tongue of the speech shall sing for joy. It's exactly what was professed. <laughs> kind of, I don't know if you noticed up here, I can have mm, I was, mm, Sarah Beth heard me. She thought that she had said something wrong, and she didn't. She read it perfectly fine, and I was like, hmm. Because he will come with a vengeance, with terrible recompense. And then when he comes, these are the things that are going to happen. Right? Did he come with vengeance and a terrible recompense? Right? We just sang this morning the great song about the coming of, of Christ in the manger. Right? Well, come, we'll come, Emmanuel. Some of you are probably wondering. We're really going to sing all eight verses. Yes, we're going to sing all eight verses. But it's a great song, and we need to sing all eight verses. Right? But we wait for this baby to come to us. Because he's going to be the Savior of the world. And those of you that have given birth might say that, yes, he did come with vengeance and eternal Right? 
And he came to do these things. And he came and he gave the, the blind their sight. And he gave those who couldn't speak the ability to speak. And he gave the deaf the ability to hear. And he gave those who couldn't walk the ability to leap. And the dead were raised. And the poor had good news brought to them. Especially he's sending back to John. What did you expect? I've done everything that they said was going to happen when I would come in the Old Testament. What more do you need to know? <coughs> Which is a question that I think Jesus would ask for each and every one of us. I've come and done everything that I said I was going to do. I've come and done everything that was prophesied about me in the Old Testament. So what did you expect? What more do you want to have happen? There's one little line in here that every commentator that I read this past week has just completely overlooked. And it was a line that was really brought to my attention at Tuesday morning breakfast. Right? We read all of this stuff about how the, the blind to see and the lame walk and the deaf hear and, the, and, and all of these things. But then Jesus, before he asked what people went out to see and who John the Baptist was, he said, And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. Which really made me stop and think. What do we expect from God? And even more than that. What does God expect of you? You see, Jesus came on the scene and was exactly not the thing that, that everybody wanted. When the, when the Jewish people were looking for the Messiah, they were looking for someone who was going to come with vengeance and a terrible recompense and take over what the, the, slave, the slavery that they were held in to free them from the bondage and the captivity that they were in and to set them free and to make them be the great people of God that they once were. They were waiting for this great victorious leader to come and lead them out of their bondage into a wonderful life. And Jesus did that. Just not in a human way. Jesus did that. Just not in the way that we expected. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. Probably the hardest thing for us to do any time of the year, but especially now as we wait for his coming. Because what is it that Jesus came to do? To give the blind their sight. To let the deaf hear. To let the lame walk. To raise the dead. To have the poor hear good news. And what are we doing about it? I saw a great um, picture this morning on, of all places, Facebook. Imagine that your pastor was on Facebook. Um, it was a picture about how it's unfortunate that when Mary and Joseph arrived in Bethlehem that there was no room for the baby. And if I had only been there, I would have done so much to do to help that baby. Well, right now your neighbors are hurting and are in need. So what are you doing about helping that baby? Who came that the deaf would hear and the blind would see and the lame would walk and the poor would have good news preached to them. What is it that God expects of you and all of us is to follow where he's leading us without questioning what he's doing. Because he, after all, is God and he has this all wrapped up in a great plan that none of us absolutely understand. But he's called us and sanctified us and gifted us and given us the best thing that we could ever possibly hope for, which is life in him. So what does he expect of us? Is to go out into the world and be his messengers to prepare his way. This week is the third week of Advent, which is the week of. Who knows? I heard it really quietly over here. Joy. It's Gadot Sunday, right? Did I pronounce that correctly for the former Catholics in our midst? The, the third week is supposed to have a pink candle. It's supposed to be the week where we celebrate the joy of the coming of God. We get a message about John the Baptist who's about ready to be beheaded asking whether or not Jesus is actually the coming Messiah. 
Because he doesn't understand. Just as each of us doesn't understand. As we wait this baby to come in a manger. As we wait for the coming of the fruition of his peace in this world. Each one of us is given the goal. Each one of us is given the challenge of following after him. Going where he's leading us. Out into the world to share his love. Because that's what God expects of us. Blessed is the one who takes no offense of me. So follow where Jesus is leading you and do what he's asking you to do without question, without offense, because then you'll be blessed and he will be with you to help you through, to see through the pain that's going to come Because he's talking about John the Baptist here too, right? He's going to be with us everywhere that we go. Because he's called us and equipped us and given us the life that no one else could. God expects you to follow. And knowing that, he'll always be with you. So don't think that the Messiah didn't come. He did. And he's coming back to help every one of us to be with him forever in God's kingdom when it comes to fruition. So go into the world and spread the joy of that. Not the joy of getting what we want, or the joy of seeing all of the wonderful decorations, but the joy of knowing that you can have life beyond all possible imagination because He has come and He will always be with you. Mm-hmm.